Howdy folks, Sapper here, a.k.a. Sean, and I'm bringing you Next War, World War III. The battle continues to rage in the Pacific. This will be Turn 4, Part 3. And so far, so we're at, when we left off the last time, it was, uh, what was it? It was the initiative move and combat phase. We have finished the initiative move, and now we have moved on to the initiative combat portion of that phase. So, not much going on in Taiwan. Um, I have decided to only do one combat. Honestly, I don't... I don't have the advantage... Actually, you know what? Hold on a minute. I might want to do that right there. I think we might be able to... Hmm, that's interesting. I did not see that. So that would be, well, that would be three to one because these guys will be halved because of that river right there, even though there is a bridge. Um, so that's three to one in flat, which is not bad. And I think because that's mechanized... I think they will get the mechanized infantry advantage. Wait a minute. No. All right. I have to see. Those are motorized infantry, so that is not mechanized. Let me look real quick and see if this counts as mechanized. Even they're motorized, but they might fall into that category. All right, so motorized. These guys are motorized infantry. So there you go. They count as leg. So I think that the the having, well, I will get the mechanized advantage, which is one and a half, but then they are attacking across the river. Which halves it. So let me let me figure out what those odds are. And uh, then I'll get back. Because we might attack that hex. That's something that I kind of, you know, I did not look at until I started getting, uh, getting the video going. All right, after consulting the handy-dandy rule book, you, you do not get the mechanized advantage across the river. So those units will be halved. So I believe it's two threes. So, yes, that is, so they'll be half, so that's 1.5. You round up, so each one of those has an attack strength of 2, so that will be 4 to 1 right there, which is in flat, which is not bad. Um, I've got plenty of air support, so I think I will, and I have naval support as well, and artillery support. So I have artillery to support them. What about this headquarters? Um, I could probably use that headquarters if I wanted to. Let's look at their headquarters has landed on the beach. That's got a range of five. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, I can even support that with the headquarters as well. So I think I will attack that hex. All right. So we will attack. We will attack right there. So I'll be back in a little bit once I have determined all column shifts, odds, DRMs, air support, naval support, everything else. I'll be back in a little bit. All right, so I have went ahead and run all the calculations. I've decided to throw in those two really cruddy aircraft to support. So they're basically half strength. So combined, they would equal a minus one DRM. I will be using that uh, surface action group. I will be using the artillery, rocket artillery. I will be using the headquarters. Hopefully you can see all that. I know I had my big fat hand in the way. Anyway, so it ended up being uh, one and a half to one odds because they I forgot that they did throw in their headquarters support. So it ended up being one and a half to one, but I had... Let's see, I had two column shifts because of the efficiency rating differences. So the Chinese got the efficiency rating bonus. 
And then the rocket artillery was another plus one. So it ended up being three column shifts. So it ended up putting me back on the four to one column, which is, so if we look here, we started here at flat woods and then the two column shifts for the Chinese efficiency and then the one for the artillery. So that puts us back at the four to one. And then I also use the naval support with a minus two DRM. They are in a town, which gives them plus one. So that's a minus one DRM. And then I had a remainder for a total of a minus two. I did throw in these aircraft, but they were early detected. Um, the, what am I looking for? The SAM result was uh, positive. So it aborted one of the aircraft. So I just disengaged the whole thing because you can't get a half of a drm so i just disengaged the whole thing so basically we are at a minus two so let's go ahead and roll and see what we get here minus two that's a five i think that is yep so that is minus one with a retreat all right so let's see that kills that guy because he was already reduced so he's dead. Um, let's see here. I will advance one guy into there. Um, let's see, is there any efficiency? I think I'm safe to move both of those in there. Let's see. You know what I've just done? I just realized I made a mistake because this is contested over here on this map. So I will have to save all of this for the basic movement and combat segment. So I'm still going to go ahead and resolve everything, but this will take place in the basic movement and combat segment. Um, and what would end up happening is I don't want to evacuate that city I don't want to leave it open all right let's do this that's Chinese for the time being yep, he's not reduced so that might be a little sketchy for the Chinese because I was thinking it was the initiative move because I still have exploitation move available so I was going to move I was going to kind of reposition these guys around so he wasn't the only one in there. Or had I done that, because I was thinking I was going to get exploitation move, I would have left that open and I would still get a chance to move some of these guys into there. But that's not going to be able to happen now. Um, Let's see. So that's that. And then right here, I decided to attack that port. Ended up being, I think, six to one odds. Something like that. I don't remember. I wrote all this stuff down, and I don't really remember it. But ended up, I think, yeah, it caused a step loss, and it forced them to retreat. So now I'll go ahead and move these guys into here. And then because that is an installation, we have to put a clearing marker on them. So there's the clearing marker. Um, we did do some cyber warfare. Nothing really happened. Cyber warfare is like the special forces. It's the nerd special forces, right? They can feel important knowing that they did something for the war effort, but they didn't actually, you know, have any skin in the game. They did it from behind a computer somewhere. Um, Chinese threw in some air support, which was aborted. Uh, the Republic of China threw in some air support. They were early detected. Of course, Chinese sent, scrambled the fighters. These guys survived the first. They survived the standoff attack, but then decided to disengage. So basically, there was no air support because of, you know, stuff. But it still went favorable for the Chinese because we were able to get that port now. We just have to clear it. Once we clear it, we will definitely be able to get way more units into here. So let's go over to Korea. I'll show you what I did and hopefully I'll remember that this stuff was supposed to happen during the 
movement in combat segment. All right, so over here, let's see, I think we only decided to do two different combats. So I wanted to hit these guys, even though there's a bunch of guys out of supply. I believe it ended up being 25 to 8, which is 3 to 1 odds. Here's all of our column shifts, so it ended up being a plus 1 column shift. Here's all of our DRMs, so a total of a minus 2. And I think when all was said and done, it doesn't look like I threw any aircraft into Oh, I did throw some stuff in there. There it is. I did some cyber warfare. This one did not survive the attack, but this, the cyber warfare wasn't successful. What cyber warfare does is if it's a successful attack, it'll give you um, a favorable column shift for whoever initiated. So the North Koreans initiated it, and then the South Koreans just decided to counterattack. So nothing ended up happening. We sent in some crappy... Close air support planes, I believe they, I don't remember anymore, but I think they ended up, the two halves combined for a minus one DRM, which is probably one of these two DRMs right here. Uh, but we did get a um, step loss. So that was about all we were able to do on that. Yeah, you know, being in the mountains and being a fortified hex, it made it kind of difficult. So, I mean, at least there was a step loss. Now, South Korea is going to have to decide whether or not they want to leave that guy there. He's basically a speed bump, right? And then the other, let's see here. So the other attack was right here. I think that was four to one odds. I was feeling pretty confident about that. Um, and I think, yeah, we threw in some cyber warfare. I don't think the cyber warfare was successful. We threw in some close air support. Um, the South Koreans didn't throw in any air support because they really don't have a whole lot. Like, well, actually, you know what? I'm sorry. Look at that. You can barely see it off camera. There we go. They threw in that. Um, and I think that's basically what saved this stack from not having to retreat from the hex. So if we look at all of our stuff here, so it was 50 to 1, which means, or 50 to 12, which is basically 4 to 1. Um, it looks like we had no net zero column shifts, and it looks like the positive DRMs are in favor of the allies. So it looks like there was a net plus 2. So that's why they're still there and they didn't move out. So I don't think the... Uh, North Koreans suffered any step losses because I don't see anything flipped over. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. This guy right here. They suffered one step loss. This is only a one-step unit. So that's why I need to video this stuff like as soon as I get it done because otherwise I forget. But luckily, I leave this stuff on the map and it, it kind of reminds me of what happened. So yes, the North Koreans did take a step. I think the South Koreans took that as a step of course they're trying to defend that headquarters in there too so don't want to lose a headquarters so they were good so basically the south koreans they need to get out of there it'd probably be beneficial for them to retreat so that there you go there you have it that is the initiative move and combat at least the combat phase of the initiative move and combat segment for Korea. So I'll be back in a little bit when I figure out what's going on next. And of course, I got to clean all this up. So I just conducted the elite reaction movement. Is it the elite reaction movement? It's the elite something or other. The elite reaction movement segment. So basically, efficiency, non initiative guys. So that would be the South Koreans, the allies. Anything six, seven, or eight efficiency. Basically, it's not too many South Korean units, but it is all the American units. So basically what I did is I started pulling back um, the 2nd Infantry Division. They were kind of in, in these areas right here. I started starting to back them up because Seoul is obviously important. Yeah, so urban hexes are worth four victory points each. So Seoul is, what, seven of those? I don't think that the Koreans, the North Koreans could possibly capture all of Seoul. But you never know. So basically, the, the defense of Seoul is starting to happen, right? So I really, I didn't want to, I wanted to put guys up here to try to save, because there is that headquarters there. 
I kind of wanted to, let's see what's underneath this. Oh, that's a strike. Somebody has a strike mark. Oh, that's on that. Oh, there's an airfield there. Okay. So, I kind of want to try to save that headquarters, but I'm not willing to risk some of these really strong U.S. brigades to do it. So, I started to pull back, and we're going to start start the defense of Seoul. Of course, the North Koreans are going to take full advantage of it by coming around this way. So, that was the elite reaction movement segment um let me see what else we got headquarters up here we've got a marine headquarters we got one four marines so that's first battalion fourth marines two two infantry um one eight two one two and eighty one two right there so there we go not a whole lot other than that i think that's it as far as uh the good efficiency units so what is next uh, exploitation movement so now it looks like the North Koreans can move anybody that's not in a Zoc or that has a strike marker so we'll go ahead and do that and I'll get back with you All right, I've just wrapped up the exploitation movement segment. Uh, let's see here. I've started moving some of these. What is it? The looks like the twelfth, twelfth core. Yeah, twelfth core. Started moving some of those guys up. So yeah, getting them on the line, ready to fight. move my MSU to here that way he can be he can still extend so this is this is from Juan San up here but he can still extend it so he extends it or he can go four so that would be one two three and then four. Um, I still have the refugee issue, which I sometimes remember and sometimes forget. But for the invader, it's not as big of a penalty. Basically, highways turn into primary. Primary turns into secondary. I'm not doing that for North Korea, though. Because I figure nobody from South Korea is going to flee to North Korea. And there's probably not a lot of North Koreans on the roads, on the North Korean roads. And if they are, the North Korean army probably would just run them over anyway. So I'm not going to, I'm not using that until they cross the DMZ. So basically supply is what's really kind of going to start hampering how fast and how far I can advance. But isn't that the case with uh, every, every battle, right? You can't overextend your supply lines. So anyway, yep, moved the moved the MSU because it could still it can keep all these guys in the supply. And then let's see, I moved up, been moving a bunch of stuff. I'm kind of moving everything this way so I can go down. Now what I have to do is I'm going to do the exploitation combat segment. Of course, you do it with a minus two column shift to the left, which I don't know. There might, I might hit this guy here, and I might try to get that guy there again. This here is nothing but a stack of headquarters. Let's see. Finally, I got tired of... Uh, I got tired of screwing around with the bridge tokens. I had them stacked underneath their appropriate headquarters, but the stack, like this stack is nothing but headquarters right here, so it would have been twice as high. I'm tired of goofing off with the stupid uh, headquarters bridges, so I pulled them all out, and I guess if I run into a, uh, a spot where I have a destroyed bridge and I need and I have a headquarters next to it. I'll look in that pile and see. So it's just the the piles are starting to get unwieldy, especially in this area. 
so I move those out. So I think, again, really the only decent spots where I could do an exploit move would be here and here. Again, we're we're suffering the the column shift, so I'll, I'll have to look at it real quick and see if it's, it's if it's worth it in either situation. So I'll be back. All right. So for the exploitation combat, after looking at it, I decided to not do that one. Uh, looking at the rules, you know, again, the rules say once you declare a combat, you have to go through with it. Um, you know what, whatever. I'm, I wasn't really declaring a combat. I don't think you can technically, you're not supposed to look through the other stacks or whatever, but man, eh, whatever. But anyway, I decided to attack this stack here. So it had this guy who was reduced and it had that headquarters in there. So when it was all said and done, they took a step loss and had to retreat. So the headquarters had the better efficiency rating, so I would have used them as the lead unit, but the lead unit has to have an attack strength of more than zero. Headquarters don't have an attack strength of zero, or they have an attack strength of zero. So I had to use this guy as the lead unit, and he ended up not making it because we took one step loss. Headquarters retreated to here, and now we get to advance in, which is kind of what I wanted. So that's an airfield right there and another fortification. So let's see. Who do we want to advance? This was our lead unit for the for the attack, that, uh, that light infantry. They have one of the better efficiency ratings. I don't mind losing them. Um, I mean, this guy has, a, has an ER of 6, but, you know, if you have to take a step loss, he, he, he loses, he goes down by half. And I, I, I can't afford to do that with that guy. So let's see, we'll move him in. Ooh, we got to move some mechanized infantry in so we can get that. Uh, oh, do we have to clear that? No, there'll be no. But we will. Yeah, we'll get some we'll get some combined arms in there. And you know what? I believe I think mechanized infantry can advance two hexes. That's something that I have never looked at before. I just happen to be perusing the rules for something, and I think I let me look. I might be able to get mechanized infantry in there. So let me I'll be back. So yes, mechanized or motorized infantry can advance a second hex if this hex was vacated. So that hex was vacated, so I can basically I can the thing I got to be careful with again is I got to look at supply. One, two, three, four. These guys are supplied from here, so they're at the four limit. I unfortunately only have the one mechanized infantry. I mean, I can always move these guys in here, but they will probably be out of supply. I think, and oh. I supported that attack with these guys here with this bomber, so that definitely helped out. I think I will advance, so I'll go in and go that way. And you can ignore Zox too, so I'll go there. And then I will go there, so that way there will be at least one unit not out of supply right there. There we go. Um, let me, so I can put that there. I captured an airfield. No, oh, no, that is only air bases captured. So there you have it. That is the exploitation movement in combat. These guys can go to the flown box. I put these guys here just in case they decided. They had better planes. They would have got shot down, but at least those guys would have absorbed any kind of uh, interceptor strike. That's kind of why I threw them out there. Fortunately, they weren't needed, so that was definitely a good thing. And I believe the North Koreans get another, either one or two VPs because we eliminated a... Ooh, that's a division.
So the North Koreans are going to get four B VPs. They got three for the division, and then we captured an airfield, so that's another one. So that makes the moves the North Koreans up to six VPs this turn. Hopefully we can we can eliminate some more stuff. And now let's go and look. That was exploitation movement. So now we go or exploitation combat. Now we go to reaction move. So now it is the it is now the Allies' turn to try to salvage something out of this. It's looking pretty thin up here, so that definitely every every little bit is hurting that the North Koreans managed to do to the uh, the South Koreans. So I'll be back in a bit after I have done the movement. All right, reaction or at reaction move. Ugh, it's tough, man. It is really tough because the allies are getting so thin on units right now um like there's this marine unit down here i really want to get him into the fight but i am like super worried that if i abandon this spot down here you know the that the north koreans can kind of move in on it so it's poof, that's super sketchy um you know i need to check about supply on these guys because it is contested. I think you have to control. So these guys could very well be out of supply. That's something I need to look into. I mean, I, I struggled to, whether or not to move these guys, but honestly, they're better. I mean, they're in fortifications. So once they leave that hex, these hexes, the fortified hexes right here, it's not going to get easier for them to, to defend. So, unfortunately, I have to leave them right there along the line. I did move these guys back. I think they were here, so I moved them back. So, at least they, they're, that's a city. So, at least they're in a city and got water on three sides. So, they're going to have to come around from here or over here, to which is not going to be that hard now. But they, are in, they did take the city or moved into the city. And then let's see. Basically, just some repositioning of units here. Um, I don't want to give up any ground because, again, a lot of these hexes are still, that's fortified. That's fortified. I don't think that one is, but that's a city. So that's definitely ground to hold on to. Start getting my light units up in there. So, yeah, it's it's definitely a tough decision, like, what do I do with these guys? I mean, these Marines, they're just kind of sitting, but they're, it's an air base. Um, so I'm, I'm reluctant to move them off. No, and let's see here. Move, move that headquarters up. So there you have it. Very, definitely not as hard to figure out movement. Where to place them is kind of difficult, but these guys, it's just so many of them. The North Koreans, it's so many units. It's like, okay, where do I, what do I move where? These guys, it's, it's like, do I leave them where they're at to defend, or do I try to get something more defensible? And basically, very tough decision. So hopefully some more um, reinforcements, good reinforcements, will be coming in soon for the Allies. But now it is reaction combat. I... I have to look very hard at what I might want to combat. Maybe this one looks kind of like an obvious one here because we've got some pretty good stuff there. These guys are in a marsh, so that means we'll get some... Uh, they're, nah, that's all mechanized in there, so I don't think they'll be... I don't know. We might get the armor advantage. I think the mechanized advantage doesn't, doesn't apply against other mechanized. Yeah, so there'll be no armor or mechanized advantage there, but that 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 looks like a decent spot to try to attack. I think that's about the only one where the allies might have any any chance. Let's look. I think that's what fifteen. Yeah, that's fifteen, and we've got thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, nineteen, twenty nine. 33 and what did i say 15 so that's two to one odds two to one odds in marsh mm, i don't think see yeah 
That's not bad, but we can't get. So two to one. Two to one in Marsh is this column here. Of course, we've got the efficiency on them. I think that'll be maybe a plus one column shift. They'll probably have enough artillery to move it back one. Um, we have one A-10 that we could support that with. So this is the column. We could probably get anywhere between two, minus two and minus three DRM. So we'd have to roll pretty low because we're looking at attacker losses. I cannot afford any attacker losses. So it looks like probably not a very wise decision to do that attack. So I think what I will do is uh, I'm probably not going to attack. So let's let's see what else where, where else we we wind up on the uh, the turn here. I have started the second strike phase, and because of what I did over in Taiwan, I got ahead of myself and forgot that I wasn't supposed to do the initiative move in combat. And I was like, well, I'll just save that for the basic move in combat. It kind of messes up the second strike phase. So I'm really not going to do a second strike phase over there. There's not a whole lot that I really would have done anyway, but... It kind of screws up the, the combat that I've already done, and I really don't want to go and undo that. So Taiwan's going to catch a little bit of a break, but it's not much of a break. So I did, um, so I was looking at the map here. Let's see if I can get this in a decent spot. That's the hard part with all these chits. So I was looking at it, and we've got this supply depot here, which is basically keeping all this. Well, you can't see all of it, but this stuff over here, it's keeping them in supply. So I was like, well, if I hit that bridge there, and I hit that bridge there, it'll take this guy out of the equation. So I threw in two B-52s here. I threw in two stealth bombers here. Um, I kept the stealth bombers together so they get that uh, stealth bonus for trying to be detected of course they were not detected which was a good thing the b-52s were detected this one was aborted due to um sam fire this one actually was hit which sucks because those b-52s are really good as far as a strike rating uh the b the stealth bombers were successful in blowing that bridge up and the B-52s were not successful, so that's that's always agitating. The overcast weather really screws it, too. So trying to hit a bridge is a plus two modifier. Overcast weather is a plus two modifier. Their pilot ratings were minus two, so that was a plus two to the die roll. I got lucky with the stealth bombers, though. I think I rolled like a zero and a one or something, which that's about as good as you can expect. I'm not quite sure why it's so hard to hit bridges. I've I've seen what precision guided munitions can do to bridges and anything that's going to be in a b-52 or a stealth bomber is probably going to be precision guided so i'm not a big fan of that plus two bridge modifier i might get rid of it one of these days just because i think that um u.s planes can hit stuff but anyway so that's it for the as far as um, air strikes. Now we're moving on to headquarters and artillery strikes, which I don't normally do, but I've got some headquarters that really aren't getting used for anything. Like this headquarters over here, because these guys really aren't attacking because they're trying to attack across that river and it's, you know, it's not that great. So I figured I'll go ahead and I'll try to do a headquarters strike on that uh, second armor division unit. Ooh, man, do I want to do that one? Which one do I want to do? Either one of those is pretty good. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll pour it on the Americans, right? So, this headquarters is going to try to strike that um, unit there. Those guys are in, it looks like... Um, I want to say that's Rough Woods. The color, yeah, that's Rough Woods. So, Rough Woods for a other headquarters strike. Basically, if I roll a 5 or lower, I rolled a 7, so that's not good enough. So, nothing happens there. I believe you can only do one strike on a unit. 
per turn. So those guys are probably going to be... Actually, I should probably leave that there so I don't make a mistake and try to hit them again. And then you kind of just rotate back and forth. So now the allies get to do one. So the allies are going to try to try to hit this guy here with this headquarters here. So, ooh, that's mountain. That's not going to be very easy to do that at all. Mountain, other headquarters. I need a three or lower. Five, not good enough. Okay, so I think... I'll definitely use them. What I haven't been doing is I haven't been the Supreme Headquarters. I haven't been using them either. So they can they can support stuff. They can do strikes as well. I could probably try to do a strike on those bri on this bridge, but I'd have to get super super lucky with headquarter strikes. Well, I think this is the only one that can do it because it's got a range. It's got a range of twenty five. So the Supreme Headquarters are really the only ones that can do strikes anywhere else but i will use the north korean headquarters supreme headquarters which is way over here it has a range of 40 and i'm assuming that it is a well it's a supreme headquarters so there's a row for the supreme headquarters on the strike chart so i should just pick pick a unit someplace it's got to be one that is detected mm. How about this guy right here? What else? There's an armory unit. Yeah, we'll get that guy right there. Maybe. All right, so a Supreme Headquarters. What kind of terrain is that? That is Highland Woods. Need to roll a three or lower. And I rolled an eight, so that is not good enough. Now I guess we'll use the South Korean Supreme Headquarters to do something. I think I'll... Nope, I can't do that. I was going to hit that headquarters right there, but he has to be detected, and he's not detected. So, let's see here. Let's try to... Let's try to put a strike on that big armor division right there. That is Flatwoods. Supreme Headquarters, Flatwoods, need a four or lower. And got a six. This is why I don't usually do headquarter strikes, because they very rarely produce any kind of reliable results. They're so it's better to use their capabilities to support combats and defenses. But again, like some of these headquarters that I'm using, I have not been using for anything else. So it's like we're just wasting their assets on on sitting around doing nothing. So uh, I think that's all I want to do over here. So now we go to the second supply phase. This is going to take a bit because I definitely have some stuff I need to, to figure out. But uh, I'll be back in a bit. All right, second supply has been done. And as you can see, there is a ton of white markers all over the place. So taking out that bridge basically put everything from here over out of supply so that is really going to the allies needed that they really needed that bridge right there to be taken out but unfortunately this is kind of this is why it got taken out because the the north korean air defense tracks are still pretty stout so and in the the Allies tried. I mean, we tried during our, I think, the first strike phase. We tried sending wild weasels in here. And we threw, I think, three or four wild weasels at it, but we just did not get the rolls that we needed, and that really hurt. So um, next best thing, yeah, we sacrificed. The, we had a, uh, a B-52 aborted, so he'll be out of probably be two turns before he comes back. And then we had a B-52 reduced, which that really hurts because... Those are really good strike bombers. Well, the one that got reduced is no longer good, but and I don't know if that's one if that's a plane that you can get replacements for. So we shall see. But this will definitely slow the North Koreans down a little bit. Uh, let me let me refresh myself without a supply. So 
So out of supply halves attack and movement, and they lose one on their efficiency rating. So yeah, that's that's gonna that's gonna give the allies a little bit of breathing room. Is it gonna be worth it trying to do an attack when everybody's halved and your efficiency rating is one lower? So yeah, that's that's definitely gonna help out. But now we are in the basic movement and combat phase, so we have already done that over there because I got ahead of myself and forgot but now we can do the movement segment and the combat segment so the North Koreans get a chance to move and fight although it looks like about about half of their move and half of their fight is not really going to be doing anything so I'll be back in a bit all right so I've just completed the basic movement phase moved a little bit of stuff I didn't move a lot I mean Movement has been slowed down, obviously, because guys are out of supply, but I'm not going to let that slow down my my forward momentum. So I move these guys. I'm slowly, can't even see, slowly moving south down the coast here. It's definitely one of my goals. All right, let's see here. Move these guys. Yeah, let's see here. I'll, yeah, I'm basically trying to, my goal is to wipe out, what is that, second core? Yeah, this is the second core here. Um, that is the seventh, eighth core, third core. Yeah, just trying to, got to gotta get these guys out of the way. They've been bothering me for a while. You would, you would have thought it would have been a little bit easier to move down the coast, but no, nah, not quite. So these guys are going to still be out of supply because there are... There are no roads in that hex, so that you need to have like six motorized movement points just to get into that hex. And of course, by the time it gets from this MSU to here, it's used. I mean, it, this only gives you four motorized movement points. So yeah, these I got to move. Actually, you know what? I probably should have moved them out. But yeah, that's exactly what I should have done. But, oh, well, it's a little too late now. Um, let's see. I did move a lot of these guys. I'm pushing them south. So these these two red cubes, this is this right here is a, nothing but a stack of headquarters. So if I move them to here, when supply comes around again, they will be in supply, and they'll be able to, to push it out. So let me see what headquarters. We've got the Pyongyang, which are the, the black units. We've got, looks like the third core, which are these guys here. So, um, I think these, there was, some, I think these guys were actually in supply. Or actually it was those guys. Let's see who else was in that hex. So it looks like the fifth core, which is the green. And then that is the 425th, which is basically, all, nope, not those guys. No. Nope. These guys here. I think there's some of those, some of the 425th is in that stack too. So yeah, I basically have a whole stack of headquarters right here. And then that right there, what unit is that? That's the red headquarters. So that is the 820th, which is... Got that really big, yeah, the 14.9. It's got that really big guy in it. So by getting the, those five headquarters here, next supply, they will be in supply and able to push supply out to their subordinates. So a little bit of pushing around. So here's the Pyongyang guys. These guys are motorized, so they can still cover a little bit of ground despite the fact they're out of supply. And then kind of trying to surround that guy. So let, I think, yeah, I think he was he was in supply before he moved. But uh, yeah, that's it. Um, movement is done. Then we'll have to move on to the combat phase, and I'll be back in a little bit with the combat phase. Maybe tomorrow. This might be it for today because I've been sitting here most of the day taking care of this stuff. So we've got the combat, of course. Movement and combat has already been done over there because I did the little oopsie. But uh, 
combat will be here next. Of course, most of the stuff that's out of supply is probably not going to attack just because it's not going to be with attack values halved because of that. Like, for example, these guys, I think, you, you know what? I think you can only be halved once. So they would be attacking across the bridge with halves them, but I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe you can only be halved one time. So that would be eight. Two. Yeah, it would be eight to ten. So, yeah, it's, what is this guy? So that would be two and a half. Up, round it up to three. That would be three plus eight would be eleven. 11 to 10, yeah, it's just, it's not really worth it, I don't think. These are not going to be very favorable conditions for the Koreans. Very good job on those um, stealth bomber pilots. The B-52 guys, unfortunately, they didn't come through the way they should have, but kind of here, it was the ADF, so we can further place blame on the wild weasel guys who couldn't get through and hit their targets. So we can always we can always find some way to pass the buck and, and pass blame down to somebody else. But anyway, yeah, I think that's good for today. So we'll see you with a, uh, I think it will be part four here very soon.